The other day I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a Christian video that had the words plastered across it, blood must flow with a nice blood drop to illustrate it. And then I went to the comment section and I was reading about how people were like, oh, God is so merciful. He gave himself for our sins. And I was thinking about this and I said, is this really mercy? Let me explain the theology here. The theology here is based upon Hebrews 9.22 that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. Now, according to Christian theology, the Father God cannot forgive sin unless blood is shed. He is limited in that capacity. He doesn't have the capability to forgive unless blood is shed. And for that reason, Jesus had to come and die on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Is this truly mercy? This is transaction. This is a gumball machine. And the currency is blood. A truly merciful God can forgive without the shedding of blood. He's not limited in that capacity. And this is a message that we find is consistent with the Hebrew scriptures. Let me give you some examples. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13, we see that King David realizes that he made a serious error when it came to the issue of Bathsheba. And Nathan approached him and he told him what he had done. And immediately King David regretted and he said, Chetasi Lashem, I have sinned to God. And right after that, with no interval in between, Nathan responds to him that God has forgiven him. There was no sacrifice brought. There was simply heartfelt regret. And in fact, later in Psalm 51, King David writes about this. He says, a sacrifice you have not desired or else I would have brought it. It's a broken heart and a contrite spirit that you want. That's what God desires. Now, this message we see also throughout the entire book of Jonah. You had an entire city that was steeped in evil ways. And when the prophet Yoina, Jonah came to them and he told them how they needed to repent, what did they do? They put on sackcloth. They fasted. They afflicted themselves. They repented. No sacrifice was brought and the evil decree was overturned. God does not need sacrifices. So now you're going to ask the question, wait, what about all those sin sacrifices? Obviously, God needed a lamb, right? He needed something to die. Otherwise, he really couldn't forgive. So let's put aside David. Let's put aside Jonah. Let's talk about that. What most Christians are not taught is that sacrifices for sin were generally only able to be brought in case of an unintentional sin. A person made an oversight. Let's say they thought it was Tuesday and it was really the Sabbath day. And so they went and they kindled the fire. They cooked themselves supper. They weren't careful enough, so they weren't aware that they were transgressing a commandment. But later on, when they became aware of it, they said, oh my gosh, I wasn't careful enough. So the prescription for this, for this carelessness, was for them to travel to the temple, part with a sum of money that was significant to them, give over a sacrifice, be it either an animal or a flower offering, if they couldn't afford an animal, bring it up to be brought upon the altar, and repent. The Levim, the Levites, were singing soulful songs in the background, arousing the emotions inside of a person that would cause them to say, God, I made a mistake, I sinned. It caused them to internalize the action and to make the vow that I'm going to be more careful in the future. That's what it was about. And in fact, if we go up to Jeremiah chapter 7, we see Jeremiah is told to go to the temple and to tell the people, guys, you got it all wrong because people sometimes did make the mistake of relying upon the sacrificial system, ignoring the fact that they were bringing a korban, the Hebrew word for an offering, which actually comes from the root karev, to come close. They were ignoring the fact that the whole procedure was to make them close to God, to make them become one with God. And instead, they were committing sins and they were just coming to the temple and they were bringing animal sacrifices or flower sacrifices, whatever it was. And they were relying on saying, oh, hey, chal Hashem, hey, chal Hashem, hey, chal Hashem. We'll just come to the sanctuary of God. We'll continue doing our sins. We're not going to change our ways. And Jeremiah is saying, no, you're supposed to improve your ways. That's what I want. In fact, he says, take your burnt offerings and go eat them together with your peace offerings. The burnt offerings included the sacrifices for sin. And they were burned completely upon the altar, whereas the peace offerings were divided between the altar the priest and the people who brought them. It was a holy barbecue. They sat and they enjoyed their food. And Jeremiah is saying, your offerings for sin that are supposed to be completely burnt, they're worthless because they're not doing their job. Stop bringing them. Go make yourself a barbecue because that's all it's worth. And then Jeremiah goes on to say in God's name, he says, did I even command you regarding sacrifices when you left Egypt? That's not what it's about. I just want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to do the commandments. I want you to come close to me. I want you to improve your ways. I want you to improve your deeds. Your works matter. See, guys, this idea that something has to die on your behalf, 
people rely on it as a crutch. People think, I'm worthless. I'm, I'm bad. I'm really, I do so many bad things. I'm evil. I'm broken. And, and it makes sense that God wants me to die. But I'm lucky. He gave me a ransom. He gave me a substitute. He gave me Jesus. Because people can't believe that God is not a man. People can't believe that God really and truly forgives. But in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 7, 8, and 9, God says, If a wicked man repents from his evil ways, and if he turns back to me, he says, I'm merciful. I forgive him. For my ways are not like your ways, and my thoughts are not like your thoughts. I'm so above this. People, this is God we're talking about. Can God really only forgive when there is bloodshed? It's painful. It's sad. It is so sad that these mistaken theologies have affected so much of the world. I literally had somebody tell me yesterday, God doesn't want us to improve ourselves. He's supposed to improve us. It's his Holy Spirit coming into us that, that makes us better. That, that's what it's about. No, guys, that's not what it's about. It's about you impacting this world, you improving your deeds, you making this world better. God believes in you, and that's what he wants. And he doesn't want this unhealthy reliance upon vicarious atonement, which completely contradicts the Hebrew scriptures. Go read Ezekiel chapter 18. The innocent cannot die for the sins of the wicked. This is a pagan concept, a pagan concept where virgins and babies used to be slaughtered in order to curry favor with the gods. No, somebody else cannot die on your behalf. You are responsible for your actions. You are responsible to improve yourselves, to connect with God, and to make this world a better place. There is no vicarious atonement, and it is extremely, extremely spiritually unhealthy for us to even entertain these thoughts. You are better than this, and God is for sure better than this.